Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the service. It's great to be gathered with you in Christ's name this morning. We just have a couple announcements for the care of the congregation this day. Uh, during our service, we have the baptism of Cooper Gregor, and we give thanks for him receiving God's promises this day and the promises that we continue to share right along with him. So it's a wonderful way that we continue to celebrate this. Uh, following the service, please come down. We have um, a time for uh, fellowship, and there's also a little cake for him down there. Um, also, for all of you to join in, too. I don't know if he's going to eat any cake today. So, uh, But please come and share that time. We're going to also have just a little bit of time where we uh, have a first study forum where we just have a few minutes to talk about something within the life of the congregation. And we get to continue to have those discussions. The ninth graders will be visiting with me and their, their mentors along after that. So we give thanks for everybody being here this day. Uh, a couple of things to look at within our, our bulletin. There's a uh, looking ahead. We have our services coming up still for our Wednesday nights. And so I'm sure we'll probably get maybe some pie on Wednesday night or maybe who knows. <laughs> uh, projects are going to be taking, uh, providing the meal for that night. So... Uh, please come and join us. The dinner is from 5 to 6, and then at 6.30 we do have our service, so please come and join us. Anybody who is able or wanting to help out and assemble some health care kits and baby bundles, uh, we're going to be doing that tomorrow morning at 9.30. So please come. Anybody is welcome to come and do it, and it's a wonderful way that we continue to uh, get together, to do things, projects together, but also the intent is for those to go out to people who will receive them, and that's a wonderful gift. So, uh, just if anybody wants any of uh, the puffins that are still on sale from the youth group, they still, there's a form downstairs, you can still do some ordering if you're interested. The cuts off tonight as far as when I'm gonna be calling that in. Um, we're gonna also, if anybody has uh, Thrivent uh, Choice Dollars, uh, if you have until the 31st of this month to actually designate them for this year, uh, those go, you can designate them to nonprofit organizations, and we'd love to have your support of that. If you don't designate them, it automatically goes to wherever Thrive wish, wishes to choose to designate those. So uh, please take a look at it. If you do have any Thrive Action Team cards available, please let us know, and we'll make sure we put them to good use. All right. Um, at this time, I invite you to please stand as you're able as we begin our service with a brief order of confession and forgiveness of sins which is found on page 116. We gather this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. The mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As I call our name, minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our gathering song, In the Cross of Christ and Glory, uh, page, uh, hymn 324. <laughs>
is curious found on page 184. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
morning. My first reading is from Exodus chapter 20. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God and the jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the, to the thousands generation for those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien residents in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. Thanks be to God. The song responds is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day it tells the tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into the land, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for a son. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the outermost edge of the heavens, and runs about to the end of the end. Nothing is hidden from the burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are, right, are true and righteous together. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey to the comb. But by them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of your proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks demand desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, 
and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to please stand as you're able as we sing together the, the gospel acclamation. Gospel acclamation will be on the top of the page that's on page 189. <laughs> Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all the people and needed no one to testify about anyone. For he himself knew what was in everyone. This is the gospel of the Lord. May we see that like to invite the children to come forward for the first message. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Well, it's good to see you. One of, one of the things that that gospel had a lot of action in. What is, do you remember one thing that Jesus did within the thing when he was in the temple? It's kind of hard, isn't it? Sometimes we hear it and we understand. He was in the temple, and this is a time where they're gathering together for Passover, so they're doing sacrifices, and they had all kinds of sheep and cattle and birds that were there to be given as a sacrifice. And so one of the things that Jesus did is he actually took some cords and what did he start doing with it? You know what he did with it? Did he go I hear, or did he go He's chasing everything out. What is he? Do? What is he using the whip for? That you guys know. Huh? I'm the only don't know. Okay. What's the only thing I can do is leaving them out? Yeah. So what's he using for you? Getting He's getting them to move. If you've ever been around cattle or sheep or any of them, sometimes you need a lot of movements in order to get them out. Waving it around, raising voices, chasing them out. Why in the world would he do that? Did he want to change things? You think he wanted to change something? Well, see, one of the things that we understand is that 
Jesus, when he has actually died for us on the cross, was one of the things where he actually saved and redeemed us. He actually laid down his life. And if you take a look, we've got a lot of images. We've got the lamb up there above the altar. We've got one over there. We've got one up in a stained glass. We've got lambs, 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 right? One of the things to do is understand that those lambs were actually meant for sacrifice. And Christ became the sacrifice for us. And once he had chased out every single animal, what was left for the sacrifice? No sheep. He chased all the sheep, all the cattle, all the birds are told to be let loose. Who was left there to be the one who would be the Lamb of God? Well, this is Jesus. Jesus is the one who is the Lamb of God. And we hear this, and we hear that Jesus is the one and only one who is left in the center. So one of Jesus' first and foremost saving acts was actually to use something like this, a whip to actually chase out the animals so that they would actually be pardoned, that they would be forgiven. So his first act of forgiveness was actually to get rid of those animals that would be sacrificed for the people. And his first act was to continue to do that. But the reason he was there was for him to stand in the very center of the courtyard and the center of this temple and say that I am the Lamb of God. And I will take away your sins. And I will be the one who continues to save and redeem you but sometimes we look at the rope as the thing, right? We look at the rope as the sign. The sign points to what Jesus is doing, pushing everything out so that we would know that he truly is the one who forgives, that he is the one who has given his life for us. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we continue to give thanks that you continue to gather us together. You remind us that as we're gathered together and the things that we think are common, that we think are the most important, you continue to push out, that you continue to remind us that you are the one who has come for us when we need it to be forgiven, when you need to show your love, and that passionate love that you have for us, that we would be your children. Grant these, your children, the knowledge and understanding that they are yours, and that you continue to love and care for them this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we find ourselves in the midst of a time when Jesus is calling the people together. Continue to actually understand that this is not at the end of his uh, life when he was just there during the last few days of his life. But it was actually towards the very beginning, the first couple, second chapter within John, we hear of Jesus doing this, of casting out, pushing aside, and actually leaving that identity. Well, who in the world is this, and what signs are you giving us? And so one of the things that we're forced to do and understand is what really is the house of God, and what is not the house of God. As we continue to understand what it means for us to be gathered together, we understand what was happening on that time. This is the Passover. And this is the Passover that points back to that time when God actually sent his people, freed his people from Egypt. But it was pointing especially to that night when they go out where what they would do is the families would gather together. And if they didn't have enough money, they'd get together with another one that actually slaughter a lamb and then paint the blood over the doorposts. And as the spirit of death, God's wrath would be poured out upon Egypt, there would be passed over. The, the firstborns would not die within their household. And this was something that continued to go out. And so sacrifice began for them as a way to understand that God's blood, or an animal's blood shed for them was a point in time that every year that they would celebrate and understand that God forgave them for that sacrifice. So this is one of those things where we understand in time that this was a BYOS type of event. You've heard of BYS, haven't you? 
buy your, uh, bring your own sheep. Brought your own sheep. So they bring their own sheep if they live close enough to the close enough to the temple. But it's also a BYOS type of event. If you maybe have traveled for a long way, then you could actually buy your own sheep. That there be in the marketplace, right outside in the courtyard, what they did. This isn't in the temple. This wasn't in the area where the men gathered. This isn't even when the women gathered, but this was in the court of the Gentiles, which is an outside area where they would actually sell these animals for the sake of actually fulfilling the sacrifice. So they would actually understand what was going in there. This gospel has a lot of layers to it because one of the things too is understanding that those who were there who actually maybe had came and they didn't, uh, had traveled long distances in order to get to the temple. A lot of them didn't have a lot of money. Maybe it was one of those things. And he really was also speaking into the fact that the people were making money, charging a surcharge or service charge for actually this convenience of actually being able to use one of the animals that was there. He was understanding that that definitely is not what church is. Church is not a way to actually figure a way to actually say, okay, maybe we can make a little extra money this way. And understand that it's the right thing to do because everybody's got to do it. And so one of the things that we do is understand that Jesus was disrupting what was going on within the life of the church. The life of the church as they knew it was one that was sent into a disarray because how they normally would do things was changed. And what would they do? What would their need be if actually every single animal was actually chased out of the temple area for them not to be able to have that sacrifice? What would they do? See, this is a place where God continues to come and gather. And this is understanding of what church really is, has always been where God comes and is with, with our, his people. He dwells with you. He continues to abide with you. And sometimes we look at, yes, the physical structures of the church. In fact, that was one of the earlier things when the right after we had our Exodus reading was when God actually told Moses to say, okay, the people need a place to meet in order for them to understand that I am there. Because if not, they're trying to figure out where I am in the world. And so what they did is God told them how to build the tabernacle. First tabernacle was a tent, a tent for where God would come and dwell with and be with his people, where he would actually be the one who continued to be the one who was the filler of the promises that he'd given to his people. So he'd come, and throughout time, they then moved from that tent to a temple. The first temple was destroyed, and now they were actually in the process of still completing this second temple. The stones were being built, continued to be decorated, making it ornate and beautiful. And one, one of the things that continued to happen in this is this temple is one that would actually become the one that the Romans would come in in 70 AD and destroy. Jesus is talking about this. It's not on their radar because this is even longer after Jesus is speaking, 30 plus years after, before the temple would actually be destroyed. So where then is God dwelling? And why is God doing this? See, one of the things that we continue to do is understand that God comes into our midst and reminds us that a physical location isn't the only place where he dwells, but he is one who actually breaks into a world that continues to need. He gives us physical spaces because we need physical spaces at times to know where we can safely come and receive a Sabbath and find rest from the busyness of the world, from schedules that are filled, from the things when we say, I don't know if I've got another hour left in my week, to understand that this is where God continues to come and bring us together. This is an understanding where God continues to come in and breaks into this world, to come and dwell with us and finds us right in the heart. Those last little verses that I tacked on were ones where he was, they were trying to figure out who he was 
And some of them believed because of what he said and some of the math, the signs that he was doing. But that wasn't what Jesus was looking at. He understood who they were and what their need was as they were needing somebody to, to find a place to be able to forgive them. They saw our brokenness. They saw the sin that was upon us. He knew who we are because he's God. But on that day, he continued to be the one who was standing there in the midst of that temple area to understand that I am the one. When we understand the zeal for this house is what's consuming me, this is actually talking about God's zeal, not ours. God's passionate love and what he would actually do in order to actually save and redeem us. Uh, pastor and former uh, professor at Luther Seminary, Mary Hinkle Shore, had a wonderful way that she talked about this. This is talking about this passionate, the extent to which God would actually go and be with us. That God is committed enough to human flesh and blood that he came in Jesus Christ. And he is committed enough that in human flesh and blood to raise Jesus from the dead after he's dead to bring him and then do something for you and me in the midst of this he comes as a body able to eat fish with his disciples after he's been raised and in a locked room he is the one who continues to show his marks to Thomas where the nails had pierced and the sword had plunged. To be the one who actually saw and physically was there present with them. The one who is physically present with Peter, who on a beach tells Peter to go and feed my sheep. This is the God who continues to love us so much that he gave his life for us so that we would find life and love and know this extent that you are the one that he was sacrificed for. That you are the one who continues to understand that this is for you. We find where God is in his promises and his words when we're gathered together. We find this as we gather together around words spoken, confession and forgiveness given. In communion and in the waters of baptism, which young Cooper is receiving this day, God's promise comes and is with us in this time to show his love for Cooper and for all of us. That God continues to call, save, and redeem, and then does something for us. He continues to gather us together and then sends us out to be the ones who continue to share this as the place where God is found within his words, within his sacraments, with his people together. And we continue to understand that this is what God does for us, that he calls us together. He gives you a time of rest. He calls us together. And then he sends us out to the world that needs to hear our words, as foolish as they may seem to us, that are life-giving to the one who hears. He sends us out as the one who continue to tend and feed the sheep, those people who need our love and care, our neighbors, for food to eat, for housing to have, for a body to be present and dwelling with as they continue to go through an illness or broken relationship. This is where God comes in the midst of being the one who came and died and was raised. This is the Lamb of God. This is the BYOS by your own strength, not your by God's own strength, to continue to make him, you his children. May you hear these words, and may they be a joy to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of this day, the Canticle of the Turning, which is 723.
In holy baptism, our graciously, the gracious and heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by bringing us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By the waters and the Holy Spirit with God's word, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. 
called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, you desire to have your child baptized into Christ. In Christian love, you have presented your son for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And, and as he grows in years, you should place into the hands holy scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith. That living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. You promise to fulfill these obligations. Sponsors. You promise to nurture this child in Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him in the covenant, live into the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. People of God, you promise to support Cooper and to pray for him in this new life in Christ. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the way of sin that draws you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created the heaven and the earth. By the gift of water, you nourish and sustain all living things. By the waters of the flood, you condemn the wicked and save those whom you chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire through the sea out of slavery into freedom and the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the spirits by the baptism of his own death and resurrection. Your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdoms and cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that Cooper, who is here baptized, may be given new life. Wash away the sin of he who is cleansed by this water, and bring him forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Cooper, Arnold, Richard, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to new life. Through this holy sacraments, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Cooper, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Cooper Arnold Gregor, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And how long is forever? Forever and ever. Amen. Oh, baptismal candle is being lit from the Christ candle. This is one that connects us to this baptism that we hold on to. This is one that is used for us now and uh, all throughout our life as we continue to understand Christ's presence with us. And is one that even holds us in the time of death that we are God's children forever. And so one of the things that we do is we continue to use and understand that Christ's light continues to shine through us and continue to be the one actually continues to point back to our Heavenly Father. So this candle can be lit on the anniversary of his baptism as a way to remind uh, Cooper of the time and understanding where he received this blessing and this promise. So this is a word for you. Cooper, let your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Justin and Autumn. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you've given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Cooper. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their son the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a, a part of the member of the priesthood that we all share in Christ Jesus. That we proclaim and praise God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let us now welcome Cooper. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming words to all the world. Peace be with you. Let's now share this peace with Cooper and one another at this time. I invite you to please stand as you're able as we Pray the prayers of the people. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world which is in need. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. You judge the nations. You pray for the end of war and strife in every land. We continue to hold before you Ukraine, South Sudan, and other countries that are facing war and challenges within their midst. Continue to provide them for safety and food and shelter. And for those who flee, Give them a place of rest and home. May continue to watch over them. Lord, in your mercy. You bring healing and hope. We give thanks for physicians, nurses, researchers, therapists, and public health workers who prevent and treat illness. We pray for any who now are sick. We lift up to you, Kathy Deerhoff, 
Vicki Porsche, Gail Emerson, Kendra Gibbs, Renee Brown, Bill Gibbs, Shirley Engstrom, Peggy Iverson, Paul Sudorsky, Holly Payette, we got Kathy Wellington, Dave Wingy, Lynn Denzer, Rick Hanslip, Darlene Humber, Kathy Janowski, Lori Helling, Peggy Zaboda, Hillary Birdsell, Doris Hendrickson, Berlin Ty, Lisa Krochak, Cindy Dorzinski, Dennis Krauthammer, Joe Myers, Joyce Dancer, Pam Krieger, Eric Engstrom, Zeke Zaratka, Matthew Moen, Harvey Chapman, Preston Pollington, Michael Pollington, Aubrey Grover, Cindy Lighthizer, Milo Kavinsky, Lloyd Zaboda, Adeline Tini, Terry Ganesh, Ken Meyer, Diane Lillian Schultz, Tom Trenda, Amy Corthus, Yvonne Corthus, and Joy Corthus. And those that we left out to you now, either silently or loud. We ask that you be with the people of the Texas Panhandle of this week that with fires that continue to burn within their communities, continue to send in support and care in this time. We ask that you continue to be with those who serve our country, especially those from our congregation, be with Noah Bachman, Brett Byrne, Lane Chapman, Jack Chapman, Travis Ferguson, Cassie Gilbertson, David Corthus, Ashley Noisky, Michael Schock, Alex Schock, Brandon Van Hout, and Sam Westerhouse. Be with them and their families as they serve. Be with our local police officers and firefighters. Be with our EMTs and paramedics as they serve this community. Lord, in your mercy. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who have died, confident that they have new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Accompany us on our journey, Heavenly Father, and may we receive the prayers that we give up to you now. Pray them in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now receive an offering for the care and concern of the ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're part the world to which we've been sent out.
our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after his supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new testament, my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and may we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Here, trust and believe that this promise is indeed for you. This gift is open to all Christians who believe in the promise of it to come and receive. This gift is open to all who believe that this is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Within our, we receive through intinction, so you'll begin with the wafer, which is the body of Christ. We'll be dipping it into the grape juice, which is in the gold chalice. Or in the silver child says wine. So please come as you are able. within our bulletin, Child of the Water.